Hello fellow detectives, welcome to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew from Her Interactive. I'm your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome actor and voiceover artist Rick Calvert to the show. Welcome, Rick. Hey, thank you, Tammy. It's a pleasure to be with you. It was interesting how we got in touch because the first Nancy Drew game you got to do was Secrets Can Kill, and that was the first of the entire series. So it's been a long time. I think that game came out in like 1998. I'm so excited we got to, we're getting to speak to somebody from the first Nancy Drew game. (laughs) That's like, uh, you know, talking to one of the first founding fathers, you know. I couldn't even tell you what the voice sounds like on that. It's been so many years. No, you really do sound the same. I think like you just put like a cooler tone to Hector Hulk Sanchez, as we called him. But before we kind of get into Hulk and the Secrets Can Kill game, I thought we'd talk about your beginnings in the entertainment industry. You know, what inspired you to become an actor and a voiceover actor? Boy, what a great question. You know, I have uh, always been interested in, in sound recording and doing voices. Uh, my dad was in the entertainment field and always had reel to reel tape machines, recorders. And uh, I would abscond them and take them into my closet when I was probably six or seven years old. And I started recording voices and and playing them back. I still have tapes probably that uh, I made when I was eight, nine years old, but I don't have machines to to play them on anymore. So it makes it a little difficult. But I've I've always I've always been uh, interested in voices. It's just something that I've that I've always done to to be able to do voiceover. Um, you would always have to have a studio. You'd have to have you know, studio availability. Then you'd go in and record. You'd have to pay for the studio time. And, and so it made uh, voiceover actors quite an exclusive group. And then over the years, as technology advanced, suddenly you had everyone setting up you know, full uh, CD quality recording in their own homes. And so now it's very difficult for people who have been established as voiceover artists for many years to even compete in the field because everyone in his brother literally has a studio in his home. So it's made it a little tougher to, to, to stand out. I think, um, your, your specific question, what makes voiceover different than, than acting is that with voiceover, you don't have to worry about things, uh, like, like a stereotype. I can, I can, I can do an old man and sound like this, and you're going to envision an old man in front of you. But um, otherwise, I just do this guy, you know, and all of a sudden it changes your whole image of who I am, you know. So you don't have that when you're when you're an actor on film. You're kind of locked in to what you look like and what your appearance is. So that's in in some ways being a voice actor is more fun because you have more freedom. Now, with this particular game, Secrets Can Kill, as I said, it's the first one in the Nancy Drew series. So it, 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 it's, it's starting to get the groove of what exactly they want the games to be like, first of all. So mm-hmm. how was that original process in auditioning first for you, for the game? Again, this was, uh, what, 16, 20 years ago? I don't even know. It was, a, it was a long, long time ago, and it was a different world. And as far as auditioning... It was a much uh, it was a much tighter circle of uh, voiceover friends, and it was you know in the old days they said you know it's not what you know it's who you know, and back then the very small circle of people that we worked with we would just refer to each other, um, and and so that that was something where we just kind of counted on each other, and if somebody needed work done you'd just call on A B or C and know that they could do whatever voice you looked for. Um, it, it's a much, it's a much bigger town now and, uh, the connections just aren't there. So it makes it, it makes it harder for the, for the old voice actors to, to stand out. You would get called in on a job. Basically somebody has worked with you before. They know you can do the job. They know you can do it quickly. And so they just pick up the phone and say, Hey, come on in. So as far as, as far as auditioning as you do with, with acting, um, and, and actually, quite frankly, it's kind of that way is in, in acting as well. 
is that uh, sometimes after you get established, you don't you don't really audition for things. People know you, they know what you can do, and they'll bring you in on a project. Mm -hmm. uh, but and I don't think that I probably I probably didn't even audition for it. Uh, I probably got called in because at that time was probably one of the most active times um, in my voiceover career. And so I, uh, I, I, I don't think that, that it was quite like submitting an audition tape or, um, you know, putting in a demo, that kind of thing. I, I think it was probably, we were probably inside the loop by the time that, that came around. And how did they present the story to you? Did they just kind of give you a layout of where they wanted to go and they didn't want to tell you the ending because they didn't want to say whether or not you were the villain? Wow, what a great question. Making any kind of uh, video or audio or interactive games, anything like that, is is quite a lot different than the finished product that you see. Um, you'll walk into a studio, you'll close the soundproof door behind you, you'll be in there, you'll put on some headphones, and then what you'll have is you'll have page after page after page after page of all possibilities of outcomes of, of a script. So you might look at a page and there might be uh, there might be 20 or 25 lines, one after another, uh, that is simply expressions of pain. So you might go, okay, here's uh, here's one dash one, uh, here's one dash two, ooh, here's one dash three, ah, uh, you know. So it it it's more like making sausage. I think uh, you don't actually get to play the thing from start to finish as if uh, it's already completed. It's it's making sausage. <laughs> More or less the way it's done is that you'll be given probably an 8 by 10 sheet with a, with a picture of the character you're going to be playing. And then you just kind of develop into that character until, until the director says, yeah, that sounds good. And then you just kind of stick with that character throughout. Um, and again, being voiceover, it's nice because you don't have the restrictions of saying, you know, well, you don't look like that guy at all. You create the voice in your mind to match the picture as you see him or her. You just give them variety and, uh, then they get to pick and choose. And, and at that point, you know, what you're actually doing is you're giving, you're giving, you're an artist, a voiceover person is an artist and you give them a palette of different colors and textures and that sort of thing. And then that artist then takes it and puts their artistic touch on it. So, you know, when they talk about, when they talk about voiceover, they talk about acting being quote unquote, the arts, it's exactly what it is. It's an art. So. And what, what was your initial reaction to playing the game? You know, for the first time getting to sit down and, and play it and hear yourself in the game. You know, uh, I've been used to doing that kind of thing. Uh, for so many years, it's always fun. It's always fun to see yourself uh, on film or projected as a character in a video game or in a cartoon. Anything like that is always it's always fascinating. Um, and, and I guess different reactions at times when you'll watch something back or you'll play a game and you go, "Oh wow, I didn't expect that at all," and that's kind of a surprise. Or other things when you go, "Well, naturally, of course, that's that's the only way it could have been." Um, you know, it's a, it's always fun. You know, some people like listening and watching themselves, and other people don't. I've I've got the kind of ego where I'll I'll watch myself a hundred times and and just never get tired of me. But uh, yeah, and you can ask my wife, and and she will tell you she gets bored with me very quickly. And and you've been working on so much since the Nancy Drew game. And so, what are some of the new projects that you've been working on? Well, I would say that uh, most recently I've I've been doing sketch comedy with a comedy group called Chain Comedy. Um, we have, a, we have a, a post on YouTube. If you search Chain Comedy Hour, uh, you'll find some of the uh, sketches that we've done. Now, what makes uh, our group different is that we do spontaneous sketch comedy. You know, there's improv comedy that people do, and that's usually quite dreadful and boring. Uh, but what we do is we, we get on stage. Uh, if you've ever seen the, the old show, uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway?, it's very similar to that, except that we actually create scenes that if you were to look, watch it from start to finish, you might think, wow, that was written for a sitcom. That was written for a show. Um, but we just make it up. We make it up as we go, and we, we use a rich character depth to, uh, um, to bring some kind of old school comedy back. Uh, it's quite different than anything we've done. I you know, recommend go look for chain comedy 
or Chain Comedy Hour, uh, just do a search, and I think you'll find some pretty interesting sketches that we've done. Not always politically correct and not always office safe, if you know what I mean, but but uh, we have a lot of fun and, and uh, are co- quite outrageous, and that's very freeing as an artist to do. Uh, I always welcome any work that comes to me from, from long ago and far away. Um, and I, I take whatever I get as gravy. It's all good. It's all, you know, it's all just, you know, pennies from heaven when they drop in. Well, if you could describe your experience working for Her Interactive and being a part of the Nancy Drew universe using one word, what would it be? Delightful. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Rick. This was a lot of fun, and I really do hope we get to have you back on the show to talk about maybe a new Nancy Drew pot project you'll be working on. <laughs> Tammy, it would absolutely be my pleasure. I've enjoyed speaking with you.